what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Gotta made it the Ravens ask too much of Lamar Jackson. Do the Ravens ask too much of Lamar Jackson? That is the first question we're going to get into from my guy, Kevin. But before we get into it, I got to give a special shout out to our newest Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, my guy, Stone, two times. So appreciate you. Not once, but two times. Anyway, no, that was a little kind of, kind, of, kind of a cringy joke, but it's okay. Anyway, first question came from my guy, Kevin B. He said, Hey, engraving has everything going. I hope all is well. As a fan, I didn't like it, but as a person, I totally understand. Pat Mahomes is already paid, and you will not stop him from playing in the playoffs. Limping and all. Well, I mean, apparently, Patrick Mahomes wasn't even limping, uh, unless in that quick clip we saw of him exiting the presser, uh, he was just really holding it together. Um, but Patrick Mahomes... Yeah, he from that he wasn't limping, but who knows? But yeah, they said he got a uh, what a high ankle sprain, I think. Or was it a low ankle sprain? I think it was a high ankle sprain. But anyway, he said Lamar is not paid, so I see why he wasn't going to come back. So will both sides stop acting like it wasn't about the contract because we knew it was. I, I feel like it's just one of those things we'll never know. I feel like it's, it's one of those things well we won't know until we know. Um, and it could be one of those things that just stays in the dark forever until we get like way down the road. We get like an ESPN 30 for 30. So Lamar Jackson, was it about the contract? So John Harbaugh, was it about the contract? What was it about? So, I mean, we, we, we'll never know. We, we will never know. Um, said the issue to me was because they asked too much out of him. Now, that is, uh, <laughs> now if that's the question, I mean, regardless if it feels about the contract or not, that's a yes right there. For me, at least. I think that's a definite yes. And I, I'm sure plenty of people before they even finished watching the video, before they even got to this part of the video, they probably type in yes in the comment. But anyway, uh, he said the least was 65 to 70%. He was asked to run 60 plus percent of the running plays. Then when passing 70 plus percent of the time, he was running for his life. Because the pass protection was absolute trash for the plays they were calling with him in the game. Mm. I wouldn't say it was always trash. I, I disagree with that part. But there were moments where it was like, man, for what he was asked to do. Like somebody, it was, some, it was really funny. Somebody in uh, one of the recent videos, they had commented. And they were like, um, with Lamar Jackson, uh, it, it, when he drops back, uh, he's sitting there waiting. And he's waiting for the guys to turn around, but they, they all got their backs to, to, turned towards him because they so busy trying to run down the field because it's all deep plays and that's it. Nothing else. Um, and then the, the offensive line, they can't hold up and he got to end up running for his life. But anyway, um, he said, uh, if they're going to trade him, it will be around draft time. Yeah, yeah. If, if they are. If they are. Hopefully they're not, but I do think and I was just talking to one of my guys about this um, Literally yesterday uh, I said If uh, they are going to trade him Yeah, we'll know before the draft Like, yeah, we, we'll definitely know Before the draft, because If they're going to trade him, they're not going to Trade him and then wait to get stuff For next year's draft, no If they're going to trade him this year, then they're going to do it Before this year's draft Hopefully they don't end up trading him and they can keep him and then they can really go in on him. But we'll see. We'll see. They, again, they said all the right things. Now, all right, how you going to follow that up? Um, and then he said, uh, if he's there after draft, then they'll have something signed before the season starts because they can't have him repeat what happened this season with not playing in the playoffs. Now, with that... If they now, if they do still have him after the draft, there obviously is still the possibility of him being traded. But um, I think that would lower the chances that they would actually trade him this year. Now, something that I said two years ago um, and still believe it to this day, if it does come to the franchise tag and there is no trade and it's just the franchise tag. I think even though things already had been here and there, I think things would get ugly at that point. But again, things have been ugly. Things have started getting ugly. They've, they've been been some nasty work that's been out there, man. Um, but again, hopefully it doesn't have to even come to all that. Hopefully it doesn't. But it's just one of them things that 
We got to wait it out and see. Next question came from Jet Lee. He said, what's up, Engraven? I was wondering what you might think about our coaching staff not generating interviews for other teams' vacant jobs. You know, I was thinking about that, um, I think, yesterday, the day before yesterday. I'm like, man, what are these other coaching staff? They're getting interviews, getting guys plucked left and right from their staff. But Raven's been silent. It's been quiet. Well, maybe because maybe their hottest coach, he left to go pursue other opportunities. And Greg Roman. But anyway. Um, he said, of course, there was David Culley going to the Texans as head coach and Wink mutually departing. He put that in quotation marks, too, uh, and going to the Giants. But outside of that, I haven't heard much from all positional coaches garnering interest from other teams. To clarify, I mean coaches garnering interest from other NFL teams, since I do remember hearing that a lot of our coaches in past years uh, left for college jobs like Mike McDonald a couple years ago. Do you think that our coaching staff or philosophy might be unappealing to other teams? Also, do you recall any of our position coaches getting coordinator jobs? While under Harbaugh uh, Personally I think Zach Orr is worthy of at least An interview Wasn't um, uh, Wasn't Anthony Weaver Defensive coordinator for the Texans Was he defensive coordinator for the Texans But he was a player though I don't think he was a coach with the Ravens before that I don't think I don't remember Um, Positional coaches as far as like QB coach running back coach da -da -da, Stuff like that Hmm. Off the top of my head, I cannot remember. I really can't. And, and I'm, I know that y'all in the comment section will definitely correct me uh, on being wrong if, if we are wrong about this. But recently, I, I, I really can't remember. My, my apologies. Um, now, I think that with some of the Ravens coaches, like as far as like the run game and stuff like that, that could be some like if if they really want to implement something with the run game, or if a team wants to implement something new with the run game, they could be like, "Hey, let's try to get one of them Ravens coaches." Uh, I don't think they will be hired as an offensive coordinator. I mean, possibly, but mm, but um, yeah, I, I I really can't think of anybody right now. Next question came from my guy Hard Heavy. He said, "Angry Raven, hope all is well." My question is, do you think if the Ravens prove they're all in uh, by not being cheap and going out to get D Hop, Mike Evans, maybe even a DJ Shark, that Lamar will take a smaller deal? No. No, no. Why? I, I, I just I disagree with that so much because why should and, and I try to put myself in his shoes? Obviously, it ain't the same tax bracket. It ain't even close. But why should I have put in all this work for you and you ain't even you ain't even give me everything that I needed? to be the best that I could possibly be. But I put in all this work for you and did so much. For your company and then when it's time for me to get a raise i should take less oh no oh no 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 no. and i ain't saying oh lamar should handicap the ravens or anything like that but he needs to be paid and paid the right way so no take less no thanks so but no i don't think he should take less oh, but anyway he said um nothing disrespectful still some see the fact that you got to say that, like, think about that. If you got to say, oh, ain't, ain't no disrespect, but it ain't disrespectful, but uh, that means it's probably disrespectful. But anyway, he said nothing disrespectful, still something above Kyler Murray. But how could Lamar pass up that type of offense with the defense looking like they do, too? How could the Ravens pass up the opportunities that they had to capitalize on Lamar Jackson and his rookie deal like they did? Next question came from Numa. He said, Bobby Petrino for OC. What's going on in Graven? It's a long shot, but what if the Ravens brought in Bobby Petrino for the OC position? I don't think he's ever going to coach in the NFL again. I, I, I just I think that ship has sailed. I mean, you never know, but... I just don't see. I know he he knows Lamar and whatnot. Like he really knows Lamar. He knows Lamar Jackson. His mom. He's familiar with the family and stuff. I, I just I don't think he's ever gonna coach in the NFL again. But anyway, he said uh, he was Lamar's coach at Louisville, and that offense was insane. Uh, it was a pass heavy offense that heavily favored the wide receiver position, but also had amazing design runs for Lamar. I know Lamar has an input for the OC. What if they brought him in for an interview? What do you think? If they did that, I would be shocked. Gus to the Bengals. Luffy, why are you trying to help the Bengals out? Anyway, he said, what's up, Engraven? I'm watching the Bengals game right now. And the one thing I noticed about Cincinnati is that they don't have much of a power running game. Mixon isn't a power back. With that being said, could you see them trying to acquire Gus Edwards this offseason? No. If, if, if he was a free agent, oh, yeah. But trade, no. They're not going to give the Ravens draft picks to no nah, I, I mm -mm. especially Gus Edwards like I remember Ravens and Steelers like Ravens traded Chris Wormley to the Steelers for like a sixth or seventh round pick a conditional pick something like that I forgot what it was 
But somebody like Gus, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. He said, I don't know if his deal is up or not, but it could be another way for the Ravens to get picks. Just, just, uh, just a thought I had. Peace. No, nah, um, I don't think they would do that. But no, his deal is not up. He has. Ooh, he got, I want to say, one year left on his deal, I believe, because him and J.K. Dobbins, their deals run out at the same time. So J.K. Dobbins was drafted second round in 2020, I think. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Yeah, yeah, this is the last year J.K. Dobbins and last year Gus Edwards deals. Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, good morning, Engraven. Just want to say Joe Burrow is trash and Josh Allen is trash, honestly. No, that's, that's wrong. That's false. Ne neither one of the two is trash. They are both very good quarterbacks they got a nice surrounding cast too but they are both good quarter like, they're not trash we ain't gotta do that but anyway he said um they're both trash honestly if lamar had any of the weapons they have you wouldn't even hear about them so sick of the narrative about lamar he's just a running quarterback my thing is he is not the, uh, the only quarterback that runs in the nfl and quite honestly he's more p poised and accurate than burrow and allen combined how many mvps they have again and burrow played a trash bills defense only reason they won uh, we we beat them easily without Greg Roman calling plays in that playoff game. He was the reason we lost. No carries to J.K. at the goal line. Three dumb pass plays at the goal line. No eye formation runs with J.K. or Gus Buster at the goal line. What the team? Oh, he said what the team keep it clean was that. Um, God answered my prayer when we parted ways. Uh, now watch Lamar and our new godsend offense set this league on fire. All right, hey, I, I, I I'm excited to see what happens next. My expectations are tempered, though. They, they really are. I, I would love for Ravens to step out their comfort zone, but they haven't stepped out their comfort zone in a long time. So why should I expect them to now? Uh, so we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, but like you were saying earlier, as far as yeah, if Lamar had the weapons that they had, that'd be nice. It'd be nice to have that conversation because I see so many people have different conversations. Oh, Lamar can't do this. Oh, he can't do that. Oh, he's not accurate. Oh, he can't make this throw. He can't make that throw. Oh, this and that and the third. And it's like, it was funny is that those were all the same conversations that people had about Josh Allen. Those conversations got squashed. Those are the same conversations people had about Jalen Hurts. Those conversations got squashed. Um, so you, you see just how, even with Tua, with Tua, there was a lot of with that con those conversations too, uh, but those got squashed. Well, I mean, now with Tua, it's a different conversation with the concussions and stuff. But besides that, it's like, the value, the value of upgrading the talent around your, your quarterback, your young quarterback, it just, it cannot be emphasized enough. It's so important because that can change everything. And with Lamar, we've seen so much of what he can do. We've seen it so much. We've seen it so much. But, yeah, you know the rest of the story. Um... He said, uh, Super Bowl after another. Praise God. Amen. Sorry for the paragraph. God bless you and the family. Tyler Huntley played better than Josh Allen with terrible offensive play calling. And Joe Burrow had a uh, sigh of relief after Huntley fumbled. <laughs> and the return uh, for the Ravens will be back. Better than ever. Ravens will be back. Roquan Smith re is reincarnated. Ray Lewis just watching. Craven just watch. Next question came from my guy Matthew. He said, hey, Craven, thanks for all the good content. It's all right, but I appreciate it. He said, I was wondering on your thoughts on this theory of mine. I think the MVP second season from Lamar is the reason why they never supported him with weapon. Ooh, here we go. Uh, you look at Tua, for instance, they saw just signs of something good in his second year. Oh, look, we see sparks, a glimpse right here and there. So let's invest more in weapons and see if he's our guy. So they go get him Tyreek. But with Lamar, they saw a second-year explosion with Willie Sneed and Rookie Hollywood with two screws in his foot as their wide receivers and said, he's good. Uh, <laughs> you might be right. I mean, obviously because they didn't do it, but let's see. He said it almost would have been better for him to not have shown out so hard that second year and they might have paid a bit more at surrounding him to see if he can grow. He showed him too fast, his back's strong enough to carry everyone. Mm. Oh, that's that's a powerful question right there. Uh, and that's something to think about. Um I, I would I would hope that it just wouldn't work that way though. I would hurt I would have hoped that it would work I I right. oh MVP and that's who he was throwing to this whole year? What? And still let the league touch out pass? Well that's crazy. Oh, you know what, man? If he led the league in touchdown passes with that, imagine what he could do to the league with this. But they never gave him this. Next question came from my guy Melo. He said, Engraven, what's good with you and the fam? I got to air myself out real quick. I've been following you since like 18K subs. And I kept saying, I sub when you hit 20K. <laughs> He said, uh, I, I've been following you since like 18K subs, and I kept saying, I sub when you hit 20K, then 30K, then 40K, then 50K, and now you pass 60K, and I got to uphold my end of the bargain. So I finally subscribed. 
man, that's um, mm. I, I I appreciate you subscribing. First of all, uh, that just you um you really uh, man, you making me like sort of reflect um because just you 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 putting those those numbers up and those those milestones that's that's really special man and i i i appreciate y'all so much man like for real man i really do i appreciate y'all so much because y'all stuck around y'all stick around uh y'all watch y'all y'all comment y'all engage y'all um we just have fun on here we have a lot of fun on here um I appreciate it, man. That that's that's special. I appreciate that, Melo. Thank you, man. Uh, so you said I, I've been thinking of a question that has not been brought up in an attempt to think of something outside the box. So here we go. Spoiler alert: It's about a receiver, but someone you forgot about. Okay, here we go. Uh, this season we struggled our passing game, especially once injuries piled up at receiver position group. I agree that we had a poor philosophy regarding our offense, but two things confused the heck out of me that I need you to explain. One, if the receivers that we have on the active roster are not producing or available due to injuries, why not promote from within? Because mm. <laughs> it makes too much sense. <laughs> he said, why, <laughs> why sign Deshaun Jackson? Uh, um, well, because um, – Give give them a speed threat, and I mean, he talked good about them on a podcast. So you know, if somebody talked good about you on a podcast, you gotta bring him in. Uh, and then he said, "Why bring back six game Sammy? Desperation, desperation." Uh, he said, "Then you double down and sign Andy Isabella and Shamar Bridges when you had zero intent on using them." I didn't even mention Benjamin Victor or Tariq Black. You mean to tell me nobody in the organization had the awareness to say, "Hey, let's give these other guys a shot," especially Shamar Bridges? It can't be worse than what we already were dealing with. I, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Uh, he said, "I mean, did this dude not scream? I need opportunities in preseason. I know he was hurt, and they settled with an injury suit, but he obviously looked good enough to be offered a practice squad deal. So why was he stuffed in a closet at the end of the season when we needed him and other receivers the most? Maybe Ravens were thinking like, all right, it's gonna click eventually. We got these veterans in the building who done had the the playoff experience and just NFL experience as a whole. They gonna get it rolling with Tyler Huntley soon enough. We gonna make this thing happen." Uh, he said, I know the season is over, so it doesn't matter, but this play in particular, something seems super suspicious to me because nobody reported on Shamar's status or availability or why the Ravens signed him. Curious to hear your perspective on this. Even if this does not make a video, I'd like to hear your two cents. Thank you and take care. Hey, appreciate it, man. Um, no, with, with, with Shamar Bridges, uh, there was really no status with him. With the, the people on the practice squad, their status doesn't get reported. Um, that's why... I remember questioning with Andy Isabella, like, hey, like ever since they signed him, like officially signed him, we heard absolutely nothing about him. But then he got he started getting called up to the active roster. I was like, oh, okay, there he goes. So with practice squad guys, unless they're cut or signed up to the active roster, we don't hear anything about them at all. We don't hear if they practice or not. We don't hear about their rep. We don't hear about any of that stuff unless they're on the active roster. The only time we will hear about some people on the practice squad uh, will be training camp and preseason and stuff like that. Other than that, no. This question came from my guy Dylan. He said, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the family. After watching the end of season presser last week, it makes me think, do we really believe the Ravens want to get a deal done with Lamar? They said they wouldn't entertain trade talks right now, but when, uh, weren't they the same ones who last year said Hollywood's fifth year option seemed like a no brainer and the price is a great steal for a receiver of his caliber. Uh, well, we all ended up seeing how that ended. So I'm not going to believe Lamar will be our QB next year till a long term deal is official or he's under center week one. Uh, it's sad we can't trust the word our front office says, shaking my head. But I know you're not a college guy, but the. <laughs> See the way the way that that was going, it, it was sounding like he was saying like you're not a college guy, like you ain't go to college and nothing like that. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, and I did for a, a tiny bit. It was really quick. But anyway, he said, "But I know you're not a college guy. But the best receivers for us in the draft are Quentin Johnston, uh, Jordan Addison, and Kayshawn Booty." Is it booty or bout? I think it's booty. But anyway, he said, these guys have elite traits and are very well-rounded receivers. We can't be put in a situation where we go after Jalen Hyatt, Josh Downs, or Zay Flowers. Hyatt is just fast and has limited route tree at Tennessee as he was only used as a deep threat and Downs uh, and Flowers are both just too little sitting at 5'10". Could be good slot guys, but we need someone dominant who can win from the outside. Uh, thank you for another great season following this team. Hey, appreciate that, Dylan. Yeah, hey, dominant on the outside. I, I like that. I, I love that. Love that. Love it. Because the Ravens, they, they got a lot of little guys at receiver. They got, they, got, they got a bunch of guys that's like my height at receiver. So, I mean, Ravens, you, you want me to suit up? Hey, I'm down. I mean, it ain't like I'm going to have to be out there all, all game anyway. Are you going to keep me on a rotation or whatnot? 
Uh, but I'm, hey, I'm ready if you need me. I got short hands or whatnot. I don't mind blocking either. I, I got you, man. But anyway, um, yeah, man. As far as uh the first part about the presser, yeah, I mean, it, see, a scene is believing. Seen as believing Like you mentioned Yeah they brought up Hollywood Even though Hollywood Wanted to be traded um, He did ask to be Be traded uh, So let's hope That doesn't happen With Lamar um, But yeah With uh, So yeah it's, Again it's about actions Like we've been saying it's, it's all about actions And then as far as The second part Yeah Dominant outside guy I, I'm with you A thousand percent Am I wrong For loving Lamar Next question came from My guy Oreo Cookie Said it He engraving I hope you are well This is right before We play the Sunday night game But my question is Am I wrong for loving Lamar And wanting him to stay Because I want this team to win No you're not wrong don't fight the feelings either He said uh, I hear so many people Giving up on Lamar Like they forgot What he did in the Browns game A couple years back Or what he did in the 2019 season This fan base knows That he is the best Q QB For this franchise Has That that, that this Q ah, Excuse me He is the best QB This franchise has had I only saw one other one But he was better than Joe And the others Not taking anything away from Joe But I just think Lamar is better But I guess I'm just wrong For loving Lamar so you say, hey, if loving Lamar is wrong, just tell him you don't want to be right. Okay, now the exact opposite of the previous question. Next question came from my guy Gregory. He said, tag and trade. Uh, good afternoon. Look, I'm a diehard Ravens fan. Hey, see, when we, people start off like that, you can tell where it's going. When they say, look, look, I'm a diehard Ravens fan, and I appreciate what Lamar has done for us. He, hey, you know, they about, he about to hit that swerve, baby. He about to hit that swerve. But there it goes. But it's obvious the front office <laughs> said it's obvious the front office doesn't believe in him. I can't argue with you on that. Uh, so DeCosta needs to get on the phone with Houston and make a trade. Houston is picking number two overall. There, uh, his great QB talent. Oh, there is great QB talent in the upcoming draft. Take your pick: Caleb Williams from USC, Bryce Young from Bama, C.J. Stroud from Ohio State. Houston would make sense uh, as a good draft partner. Go Ravens. Oh, as much as I, I would not want that to happen, um, it is something that is a realistic option for the Ravens. Um, the Texans obviously looking for a quarterback. Davis Mills is not their long-term guy, uh, and they have a high draft pick. Um, Lamar would instantly, instantly uh, boost up the Texans like that, literally from jump. Um would instantly give them life. He'll be reunited with Chris Moore again too. Hey, uh, but I, I I don't I don't want that to happen. Um, but it is one something that we won't know till we know. Um, we won't know till we know. Uh, but you know, Ravens like they said that they weren't entertaining the trade stuff. But you know, they like they thinking about it too because they got as a business. You got to think about every single possible option that there is. You have to, whether you want to take that route or not. You got to think about it. Um, so I'm sure this is something that crossed their mind. Let's put our GM thinking caps on. Next question came from my guy OMG. He said, "Angry, hope you and the family can get some sleep after this awful end to the 2022 season." Like I promised in the live stream, here's one of the many questions from subs you'll be reading. I've been thinking of some of the many ways we can improve the, this off season. Here's some ideas I had in mind, and you let me know what you think of it. You're welcome to disagree and make adjustments anytime. So number one, trade Nick Boyle, Proche, Malik Harrison, and Chuck Clark to gain some draft capital. Oh, um, okay. So Boyle like. Was hardly on the field Proche I, I know that He definitely fell out of favor With the Ravens After this past year I, I, And I've said on myself I don't see him coming back Malik Harrison I'm not sure Well I was about to say I'm not sure having him Roquan Smith He happened um, So that took away from Malik Harrison He has one year left on his deal Because he was drafted In the third round in 2020 With Patrick Queen um, So yeah This is the last year of his deal So he could do that Because uh, I don't see them Resigning him Um even though he would come in at much cheaper than a Patrick Queen would. But we'll see what they do with that. Um, and Chuck Clark. I, I, I think I think Chuck Clark is getting traded already. Um, the other ones were the trade or cut, uh, whatever. Uh, some. So, yeah, I could, the first one, you're number one. Okay, I see it. Number two, use those, that draft capital to go after one or many familiar faces Ravens fans have wanted in the past, young and old. Denzel Mim from the Jets. Well, that ain't going to take much. That wouldn't take much to get him at all. Um, Terrence Marshall from the Panthers. Well, I forgot about him. DK Metcalf from the Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. That'd be great. Hey, I would love it. I just don't see it. 
uh, or D Hop from the Cardinals. Number three, let all free agents walk away and retire, but just keep Andy Isabella, Shamar Bridges, and Josh Ross, the linebacker. So two receivers and linebacker. So let all the free agents walk away or retire. Oh, you like, are you really trying to move? We got what, like something like 22 pending free agents, something like that. It is something like real high number. I forgot what it is. Ooh, Ravens got a lot of work to do. But hold up. You said let all let all free agents walk away or retire. Lamar Jackson is a pending free agent. So let's let's keep going and see what you got to say. He said number four, fire Giro. This is a must. Okay, so that obviously happened. And hire Eric B. Enemy or make T Martin O. C. Okay. Though both of those are still possible. I think it will be more likely that it's T Martin than an Eric B. Enemy. But anyway, he said give Lamar his desired money now. If he demands a trade, get multiple first and seconds, third and fifth. You know those fists will come in handy and address QB as well in the draft. Oh boy, yeah, you really got your GM thinking cap on. You said so. You said, hey, it's either all or nothing. You said no games, either pay Lamar or trade him for the picks. Well, you 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 cut dope. And he said, if Lamar resigns and steals with us, addressing the first round wide receiver to compliment Bateman, uh, cornerback, defensive line, outside linebacker, and uh, offensive tackle, and inside offensive lineman in the draft. Rehire all the medical doctors in the Ravens organization because clearly they don't know how to diagnose player injuries properly and risk them getting re-injured uh, and out for the season. So rehire all of them, bring them back because of that? I, I think, I wonder if you got something mixed up there. Because you said rehire all of them. Okay, anyway, he said, I have been looking at free agency players this offseason, and no one pops out to me when it comes to the positional needs that the Ravens need. EDC and Bishotti, you should have seen and heard enough from the fans that your philosophy needs to change, but keep what's not broken. Lamar needs help badly. Sorry for this long essay-like question, but I'm looking ahead to 2023 and hopefully hoist a Lombardi then. Thanks for everything you have done for us Ravens fans and team Keep It Clean. Did you know you were the first YouTuber that I have become a channel member to? Uh, you know I'd be usually uh, using that cost for something. <laughs> <laughs> Using that cost for some McDonald's But supporting you is more important to me LOL Keep up the great work And just like How I want my memory Of this 2022 season to be I'm out Hey appreciate you OMG Alright and one of the last questions On this episode Came from my guy Corey You said Kellen Moore So I had this on my mind Just a few days in Graven Side note This sounds crazy But I just wanted to share My dream last night I went to sleep After being in the live stream Of the playoff game And clearly you And the Ravens Were on my mind Because I had a dream I went to your crib Had a nice house Off the beach in Florida And though I never met you And the family Your wife and Carter Welcomed me with, in, with Pookie And we sat down And played Madden Then NBA 2K <laughs> Okay he said, anyway, I woke up with a smile since then. Uh, that was just so crazy. But, hey, maybe we'll hang one day with my wife, too. Happy to wake up in a good mood uh, rather than being sad about the game. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about right there. That's it. Because, the yeah, the game, it was bad. Ravens lost. Yeah, it was tough. But being able to wake up happy, that's far more important. Uh, he said, um, back to Kellen Moore. Though Cowboys fans don't like him, isn't he a major upgrade from Greg Roman? I mean, Situational play calling is the issue. Like these past two years for the Cowboys in the playoffs, yikes! And now I think you sent this before that last, before that playoff game against the 49ers. So yeah, you did it. You sent this on the 16th. So that was before that game. But you anyway, he said. I mean, especially if the Cowboys lose tonight or have bad plays drawn up, he's gone. I think we'd happily take him. What are your thoughts? Also, I rarely write, but I'm listening all the time. And wifey knows the intro by heart. <laughs> Hey, appreciate that. She knows the intro by heart to you, the vault. Oh, the Bobby and Sarah, and those James and Glenn's voice. Oh, yeah, four and those sports. Shout out to all of them, man. He said, here comes a, oh, but yeah, as far as it's situational play calling, no, no. Yeah, it'd be an upgrade, but the situational play calling will still scare me, man. It will still, it will still scare me a lot. Uh, but anyway, he said, here comes a wild off season. And if Bashadi is smart and a businessman, he'll keep Lamar. Lamar sells seats, jerseys, and is the Ravens. But, Lamar will sit down and make some demands. He'll probably accept lower money now, but a different offensive coordinator. Nah, lower money now. But a different offensive coordinator. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I think, when did Greg Roman get, well, when did he step down? I think it was on the 17th. I don't remember what date it was, but he sent this on the 16th. But anyway, uh, he'll probably accept lower money, but a different off offensive coordinator without question and two proven wide receivers from free agency with one possible uh, one or two top picks in the draft. Also, Harbaugh is as much at fault for this loss, though I think overall our offense played well, minus the major plays, but Harbaugh kept Roman. That speaks volumes. All right, I'm finally out, and so is Marcus Peters. <laughs> Playing 20 yards off every play. Come on. I, I guess he just ain't want to get beat. And still coming back from the ACL, Achilles injury, whichever one it was. I guess he just ain't really, he really ain't want to get beat. Because I think with Marcus Peters, 
he was remembering that Miami game and that woo he was remembering that and that scarred him that scarred him for the rest of the season he was like I ain't trying to let this happen no more so after that he's like hey I'm playing way back man uh, anyway, he said, I, I feel for Calais and Justin Houston. It takes so much to get ready for another season. And even if Lamar stays, what's their reason for staying again? Mm. Hey, that's real right there, too. Because, yeah, they are uh, obviously up there in age and experience and whatnot. And they, they wanted to make it happen this year. But you got to think that 31 teams, 31 teams all lose. Only one winner. There's only one. 31 teams all lose, whether players are up there in age or not, whether they're getting ready to retire. 31 teams all lose. So, yeah, obviously we focus on the Ravens more, so we, we, we feel for those players a bit more, but it happens to everybody. That's, hey, that's part of the game. That's part of the game. But anyway, anyway he said, um, P.S., again, LOL, uh, I had a lot to say since it's been a while. I agree with you that the Ravens will win this game. Uh, though on paper they shouldn't have, they had the will and fight. I told everyone if we don't commit turnovers, we have a good uh, have good coaching and stick to the run game, we'll win. Well, we know how that went. <laughs> Never got momentum again after that fumble at the three. That's true. That's true. Um, that's very true. A after that, yeah, that 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 was a wrap. And then um, I remember play after that. Tyler Huntley would he just looked scared to throw. He he just looked out of it. Um, because football again, football is a physical game, obviously, but it's it's probably more mental than physical. And it seemed like after that play, it just seemed like the Ravens were mentally done. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my home. Shout out to Graven.